All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my first steps to my LSA swap. Uh, as you see right here, I'm just all I'm gonna do today is just mount the heat exchanger. I got the hoses coming. Um, should be here soon whenever FedEx gets them here. But I'm gonna go ahead and at least mount this. I just want to get the bumper off. Go ahead and get this situated and get the bumper back on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount the pump, run the wiring and the hoses and everything, so it'll be set up. I just had the hoses just kind of, kind of zip tied out of the way in the engine bay for the moment until I, you know, get the LSA in. I'm Got miscellaneous wire and stuff here. Um, like I say, this is the reservoir I'm gonna use. I think this is was for a Camaro. It's like an alternate version for a Camaro. I don't know. I was gonna use a CTS V1 or Cobalt SS, whichever you wanna call it. A little clear, small, almost tea looking one. But this one gives a little bit more quantity. And like I say, it's black, so I like that. Um, regular Bosch pump. Um, this is the relay I'm gonna use to uh, wire it up. I got the Frozen Boost 101. This thing's a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, I was planning on running like a small, smaller one up top and a smaller one at the bottom. I was gonna run dual, but when I saw how thick this thing was, I don't think I necessarily need to. I'm gonna plan to mount it. I'm gonna use these, probably have to maybe bend and fabricate a little bit. Just got these L brackets. Things are pretty thick, durable. Um, I'm gonna try to mount it. It's a, uh, I know it's two bolts for this latch. I think one about here and one about here. So my plan is to put the tabs on the frozen booster kind of here up top. So I'm gonna try to probably have to probably cut this bracket, get a flat piece and mount a hole through here and have that bracket going to that bolt on the left side. And this one go to the right side bolt of that, uh, the hood latch. Um, I say this is the fuse I'm gonna use, uh, hoses or the plugs. All right, so this is how I'm gonna set up the relay to run the intercooler pump. Um, this is the basic, you know, relay post. Uh, I did get the one with the 37A in the middle, which is for a constant close, I believe. Uh, 87 is constant open, but that's neither here nor there. This is what I'm going to use. Um, so I have pin 30. Pin 30 is going to go to uh, a constant 12 volt ground, excuse me, constant 12 volt positive source. I'm going to run it to the fuse box. It's a little uh, terminal right there for the fuse box. So I'm going to just run that right there, passenger side. Uh, that'll fit in perfectly. I know that won't be an issue. Um, have 85, that's going to be my ground. I'm going to run that to the actual ground terminal. It's the ground terminal right in front of the fuse box, uh, forward of it. Again, same passenger side. I'll show you all what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, 86 is going to be the 12 volt switch source. This is going to be what gives power to switch the relay to give the, uh, 12 volt positive source to go through the 87, um, to pin 87, which will be pin 87 is going to go to the positive terminal of the intercooler pump. And, uh, of course, then I have to you know the ground of the intercooler pump grounded. I'll probably actually run that ground of that pump to the same ground that I'm going to run 85 to. So I just probably have a line going and tie those in together and connect both of those to that ground terminal right there in front of the fuse box. Uh, the switch source, I was thinking about trying to find a fuel pump relay. Basically, you need something that's only on when the car is on or running, i.e. a fuel, fuel pump. That's one thing that only cuts on when the car is, you know, on. Um... And I, it runs when it's on when the engine's running, so you know that's why I like that source. Uh, I'm not sure if the car has a fuel pump relay up there. Um, if not, I know another source. It'll probably be just an ignition uh, ignition source for fuse up there. I had to research to make sure, but I think uh, I know a guy that did one. I think it's YouTube. It's the Bone Crusher. Can't remember the other one, but uh, I think he ran his to an ignition source up there. I don't think it was a fuel pump though, but uh, if not, I'll run mine to that same source since it seemed to work fine for him and I know it's, you know, only comes on when the car's on. So I say this is the layout of my uh, relay and I'm also going to have a fuse, you know, right here between the constant 12 volt positive source, you know, and the relay. Um, you can buy these kits already put together. I can't quite remember how they are, but this cost me nearly nothing. I think this relay was maybe six bucks. The fuse was maybe five, six bucks. And I already had wiring, so you know, I spliced it in myself. You know, that'll be no issue. So, I'm pretty sure the the switch that comes all together is, is at least sixty bucks. You know, so you're saving yourself a good bit of money here if you know a little bit about electrical, and you can pretty much search these diagrams online with no problem. So, like I said, once I get the hood popped, I'll show you kind of more where everything's gonna go. As for my little relay setup that I was telling you about, um, this is the ground I'm gonna be using. It's right here in front of the fuse box. Take the fuse box cover off, you'll be able to get access to this terminal in the back. This is the positive terminal that powers the fuse box. So that's gonna be my positive, this will be my ground. Um, I haven't quite seen a relay in here, a fuse in here talking about fuel pump or anything. 
or that I know what it says is maybe it may be worded differently, but uh, I think uh, Bone Crusher used some kind of ignition source over here, something that said ignition. So I'll have to check back and see what he used, and that's probably what I'll use since I know that'll work. Um, I guess I could also use this as a ground as well, too. That's also a ground, but whichever one you want to use, I'll just probably use this one. Um, yeah, that's it. I say stuff's over here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the bumper off and try to figure out what I'm gonna do, uh, see what it looks like. All right, so this is what I got under here. Um, let's see here. So go about here, and actually, it isn't a, a bad fit from what I see. Um, I will have to get rid of these little plastic covers right here. Uh, I'm just gonna obviously I already popped it off. Little plastic covers on, so I have to get rid of that. Um, these little plastic covers here. These are gonna have to go. And I was gonna make a bracket for this. This plastic piece. I, I honestly I don't want to get rid of the bumper cover. I probably will have to trim a little bit along here. But I think for this I'll just probably trim here. And maybe trim is trim a thin piece you know just enough the plastic's actually pretty sturdy so enough to actually keep it up there let me see how far this thing goes yeah you can see looking at it really won't even too much contact i say it's not perfectly even but as you see it's just a little bit of trim for that just so it'll fit back there perfectly um this side i may have to trim more just so i can get the hoses through um uh, yeah but other than that um it doesn't look too bad i actually may just be able to in the actual metal bumper maybe depending on how i can do it since it has those two slits for uh, where the screws will go i may be able to just cut you know once i said i'll trim this back so this part will be just bare crash bar but i may be able to cut two slits uh drum allowed enough slit in this crash bar and have that slot right down in there and that'll hold it like a support and then here this is the screw i was talking about going to this one on this side and then the screw on this side to hold it up. If not, this is just bare metal. I can find a screw or something, or even those metal rods are long enough, I can bend them over and just have it go through a screw for this top mount. Yeah, that screw hole. So, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and get this plastic piece out, or these plastic pieces out. Okay, so here's what I ended up doing. I took those plastic pieces off, I just cut them. Actually, I just cut them with a regular knife. I'm gonna go through and trim them up better later. I ended up having to cut the crash, but I don't, I don't say I'm gonna had to, but the fit was kind of close to the bumper otherwise. So I didn't cut it completely. I noticed in the side, it's kind of layered, like a multi-layer crash bar. So what I did was trim down just this front plate to this middle plate here. So I just essentially just took this layer off and got it down to the second layer. And like I said, that's what I did here. And that gives me, you know, that gap with the intercooler, excuse me, heat exchanger sit right here. I'll lean it back a little bit. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with the mounts. Then I did the same thing with the plastic cover. Trimmed it just a little bit. Uh, like I said, I didn't trim it too, too much, but just trimmed out a little portion. Like I said, so the intercooler will clear, the heat exchanger will clear. Uh, for example, I mean, it's not exist sitting perfectly how I want it, or how I will sit, let's see. Trying to see if we get there. You'll see something like that. Slight lean back. Uh, this side, I think I still have enough clearance. This is ceiling I had when I had the wrong ends in there. I think I still got enough clearance. I'll probably trim a little bit out of this just to make sure that hose clears. This top one, I may, I got straight fittings, but I may have to get a 90 degree to get the point right back here. Um, so that's going to depend on where I run the hose. I can probably maybe run it right under this piece if i can get the bend down right under here you know to come out here this is pretty much how i plan to route it anyway um that's gonna be the inlet top piece and i have the outlet at the bottom um so what i got right now i'm gonna go ahead and at least bolt this plastic piece back up and kind of trim it up smoother i just wanted to keep this on here and so you know uh the bumper support it doesn't really do anything but at least the bumper you know we won't push the bumper down or anything like i said it's still functional so just kind of cut out a slot to have the heat exchanger sit there. I know a lot of people don't want to cut their crash bars. I didn't want to take it completely out, so that's why I just did it that way. So I still have functional crash bar with enough, you know, space where I can sit the heat exchanger how I want it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna leave it right here and I'm gonna put 
put the bumper up here and see how it fits. I almost finished up. Uh, all right, so now I got that kind of halfway situated where I'm gonna mount the heat exchanger and go over to the intercooler pump. I'm gonna mount it right down here uh, behind or in front of a passenger side fender well. If you look right here on this frame, it's like a, a nut right here. It's already threaded. I happen to find a screw that uh, fits in it perfectly. So I'm gonna mount it right here. I put this pad here because it's kind of gonna be, it's gonna be the angle. That, it shouldn't hit that, but I just got that there for a little cushion, just in case. So then it'll be kind of angled out this way, but this hose will come right up here. It'll wrap around. It should go right here. The port should be right there for the outlet. And then, see right here, I got space right to the engine bay. That's where the uh, inlet will come from the reservoir. I'll hook up right there. I'm gonna mount this up and then I'll show you all what it looks like. Pretty much be mounted something like that. I said I don't have it tightened yet. That way I can kind of adjust the angle how I want it once I actually get the uh, heat exchanger sitting in there and get the hoses running where I want them. It's probably gonna be farther back like that just so I can make sure I got a good angle. Not too much being up on the top. But there it is, nice, it's out of the way. Probably get some cool air there too, so uh, that's what I'm gonna go with for now. As far as the reservoir goes, what I decided to do was, I wanted it somewhere kind of preferably on this side because that's where the outlets were, in the outlet for the heat exchanger. So I have this Elite Engineering catch can. So what I decided to do was just because I couldn't really find a good place to put it. I mean, it's gonna end up somewhere around here probably but I had this L bracket still, so what I decided to do was I'm gonna drill another hole and just use these two existing holes for the catch can. I'm gonna mount it, of course I'm gonna trim and cut it, but I'm gonna mount a bracket here, just like that, a little bit farther out in front. And then, once that's mounted, I have the reservoir sitting about right here. Shouldn't be in the way of any of the belts or anything. I'm looking down where the third drive belt is and still looks like it has good clearance i got decent clearance here um so that's the plan for now like i said it'll be right here in the front easy access the feed right here will come just loop around right to the actual uh intercooler brick like i said the outlet i just loop that right down below the fans right into the inlet of the uh intercooler pump back with a little update um, I ran ahead and ran the wire for the connection to the pump. Just ran it up, got this little loom, put it through there. I also ran the hose. I got this hose, uh, it's vibrant. It's a uh, silicone. I got 20 feet. Uh, I think it was, I had to get back with the price on it, but I was gonna do rubber, but silicone a little better with temperature, so I got that. Um, I went ahead and kind of ran that one hose. Um, as you'll see this one hook right into my uh the inlet and then the other end will come up here and it'll be kind of right here because the uh this will be mounted right here so it'll kind of run down and then snake into the in the inlet of the uh, intercooler pump right there um but before i plug everything up i actually want to check this and test the circuit because i definitely don't want to put the bumper and stuff back on and then somehow it not work so that's the reason i went ahead and ran the wiring so I'm gonna actually go ahead and like wire it up. Um, say the, uh, this is just the regular, uh, the wires from the uh, intercooler pump, it's just a positive and negative. I'm gonna go ahead and work with this relay, and get the relay wired up. And like I said, the last thing I have to do is figure out which fuse I'm gonna tap in for the switch. I'm gonna uh, hook up the pump. I'll get a bucket of water or something because I wanna actually see how it pumps too, so I'll do that now. Okay, so I finished wiring everything up. Um, Here's my positive 12 volt source. Constant, like I said, just a terminal for a fuse. It's going into number 30 on the relay. Honestly, it could go into 30 or it could also go into 87. 87 is the top one. The switch just pretty much allows flow from uh, 87 to 30. So it just allows the current to pass through. So even if you switch them, it doesn't really matter. But I just chose to go with a uh, I chose to go with 30 on the relay. Like I said, that's my constant 12 volt. I have my uh, uh, fuse right here, inline fuse. Um, let's see here, 85. This here is the only thing I don't have connected yet. This is the switch source. This is gonna be what allows the uh, current to flow between 87 and 30, which is yeah, between 87 and 30. So once this switch is activated, it's pretty much like a magnet. It'll click open the uh, 
excuse me, a connection between the two. And that's why I still gotta research right quick to figure out what I'm gonna plug it into. Well, I gotta, you know, look at, see what's on here that may come on only when the car's running. Um, I have my ground, just here. And like I said, I'm just gonna end up running that uh, right here. That's the ground for the relay. And I also tied in the ground for the pump and down there. I tied that into this as well. Um, like I said, I could have grounded it somewhere else, but I mean, it's pretty close, you know, it'll be all together. And then, uh, I also have um, the power source from the relay, excuse me, not from the relay, the power source from the pump, which I say is 87. Like I say, it could have been 30, and I could have had the positive, constant positive on 87, but it also work if you have the constant positive on 30, and what you're trying to power on 87, which is how I did it. So either or, that say that doesn't matter. Uh, this fuse did come with the 87A, which is for the normally open, normally closed, excuse me. But like I said, I'm not using that because I want it to be normally open and only closed when the switch is activated to allow the circuit free to close, or circuit to be closed for the power to flow through. So hopefully I wasn't too confused tonight, I'm not an electrician. But um, I wanna see if this works. I'm gonna find the source right quick. and yeah, I'm gonna test it out. I already got some, uh, got a bottle of water here and a bucket to catch it in. So I'm gonna try it uh, once I find the source. Okay, so I finished the setup. The fuse I went with was uh, on here. It is number 47, FSCM ignition. Um, I just did an add a fuse. I just did an add a fuse and uh, ran that to the ignition source on the relay. And now I'm gonna test and see what, what happens. This is the source that uh, is Bone Crusher SS. That's his page. This is the source he used. So I'm gonna see how this one works out for me. Relays in. I'll hide all that later. Right, let's see here. progress um see i got my brackets mounted up right there once i get everything lined up i get that hole lined up with the bottom one put a screw in there screw in there and have a slight lean back to it as you can see um pretty much got it situated had a few issues and like i say the crash bar stuff and so i wanted to keep it though so i didn't completely cut it i just pretty much notched it and i just notched the uh a bumper support I, I didn't want to get rid of uh that case you know bumper didn't want to be caving in or anything uh, like I said, I'm gonna get these brackets exactly how I want them. I made a notch in the crash bar on the bottom for the two at the top, like pretty much two slits. And those two on the bottom slid right down in there. And then I got a screw right now loose and those two holding it. So I can kind of rock it back and forth. And I also got these uh, rubber mounts that I put, what I actually took was uh, the silicone holes. I did was cut two sections and I slid it in the middle and kind of opened it up and set it right on, say like the curve, just kind of folded over the curve. Uh, Got some adhesive on there, so it's on there good. Uh, probably gonna paint a little bit, just make it, you can see it right there. I kind of got those as bottom, like mounts. Kind of lifts it up maybe a millimeter higher than what it was. But like I said, that's not bad. It actually made it a little bit easier for mounting, reaching my brackets. Um, and like I said, that'll keep it, like I said, bolted, it shouldn't move anyway. But just in case it'll have a little support um, on the bottom. Uh, only thing, I may have to get a 90 degree elbow right here. And have this go straight back. I don't think I'm gonna be able to clear this light. Um, so other than that, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, next time you see it, it should be mounted. You may have the bumper back on. Like I said, I'll finish showing you all how I routed the lines for the uh, inner fluid pump. All right, so here's my bracket I made. Had to bend it and put like a slight twist in it to get it to work right. Uh, had to drill out this hole slight to make it fit. It'll go pretty much like this. The bottom one I had to make, I made it a little extra big because I found these little rubber grommets. It's just big enough to fit in there. It'll add kind of like a little cushion. And I figured you hit a bump or something like that, so it's not just, you know, all metal, all metal. You don't necessarily need that, I don't think, but it kind of gave me a little more leeway to kind of flex it where I wanted it to go, so. All right, so you see, there it is. I put this grommet in this one side. So once it, uh, once it goes down, it'll be right there. I lift it a little bit. And once I tighten down, the whole will line up, but that's, that's how it is. All right. So 
Yeah, it is pretty much mounted. See, I got my bracket right here. And I just use the, the bolts for uh, the hood latch. You see, because of how the, the locks on the inner are. I just put these little foam pads just in case to protect it from the bumper, in case it, you know, get a bump or something or wind. It happens to force it back a little bit. Uh, I was routing for my hoses. So I got pump here. Say right below this bumper. My outlet. Let's get my outlet hose right here. Comes up right through the top. Go through. I have my outlet hose. And the outlet hose, excuse me, this one right here. And my outlet hose comes all the way up. I even got it laid here, which is this one. Got a little extra long right now. LSA should be here. I have a 90 degree elbow going that way. I just made it a little long so I can cut it how I want it later. And then gotta be inlet on the inlet. I don't know why it's not focusing. Hang on. Gotta be the inlet on the supercharger. And then my outlet, I'll loop over here, kind of like this hose, and I'll loop right to my reservoir. You know, I'm saying from my reservoir, my reservoir will go down right into the inlet of the pump. And that's my circle. All right, so I got this loose right now. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten everything down. See how the bumper fits back on it.